And good evening. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, uh, uh. It's it's January. That it's would be a great for October. What's your January nineteenth? Uh, uh, uh. Today is the day that we cel- celebrate uh, the birth of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, it is a federal holiday. Did you hear what the <laughs> Strike one. Did you hear what the Seahawks did? What did they do? They posted like Russell Wilson crying and compared the Super Bowl to M- Martin Luther King and the Shut civil rights. Shut your freaking mouth right now. They they made me hate him more. <laughs> how, uh, how? And they I, immediately deleted the tweet and like we we're sorry we are so compared stupid. a football game in the civil rights movement. Right. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I there, there have been so many things that I would consider extremely racist. People, people trying to, um, I don't know, be down with Martin Luther King and really have no idea what he stood for or, uh, you know, what, what he was trying to do. Um, you know, it was it, it was about, um, it, it was about freeing everyone. It happened to be that a. A lot of races aren't particularly, um, you know, enslaved by by bigotry, um, and as well as Dr. King was um, a black man himself uh, in a time when when black people were not allowed to do a whole bunch of things, and and you know the progress that he made was was unbelievable. And here we are in 2015, um, thankfully being able to celebrate uh, all that he did. And, and to degrade it by, in any way, shape, or form, I can't even imagine a sentence that would make sense, Dr. Martin Luther King and the Super Bowl. I, I, I don't even get it. You can't even say, you can't even say that what he, what he did for the civil rights movement, movement was like winning the Super Bowl. Because you know what? The Super Bowl happens every freaking year. Right. It's, it's special, but it's not that special. What he did, there is no comparison. None, zero, zilch. Are you looking for the quotes? Uh, no, actually, I was looking for a, a counter story um, that from the Patriot side that I saw earlier that Vince Wilfork, um, dude on the Patriots, on his way home from the game, uh, pulled a woman from an overturned car. The 350-pound uh, dude. Yeah, he's huge, and Whoa. he's just, like, reaching up, helping this lady get <laughs> out of his car. It was fantastic. What, what happened? Her car flipped over? She was in a car accident, and her car flipped over? <clears throat> let's see. It says Patriot, <clears throat> Patriot Way exemplar and defensive line stalwart Vince Wilfork. God, what a bunch of dumb words in there. <laughs> Pulled a woman from an overturned car on Route 1 in Foxborough after the Patriots AFC championship victory, according to the Massachusetts State Police. Police responded to a rollover Jeep Wrangler or rolled over Jeep Wrangler at about 12.45 a.m. Monday and upon arrival found Wolfork assisting the trap driver, 38-year-old Mary Ellen Brooks of Hanson. According to the police, Trooper Kenneth Prolix held Smith. the driver's side, uh, driver's side door open while Wilford pulled Brooks free. Well, there's a picture of it, so that's kind of cool. God, how crazy. So, see, I mean, not, not that... Our two stories right there should influence who you want to win the Super Bowl. But let's just say that one team seems to have people that are doing good and another team seems to have people that are just continually being dicks. Well, Well, then the Patriots are... They're cheaters. They're they're getting investigated for deflating the ball in the AFC Championship game. I I think the Colts stole it a lot. That's right. The Colts may not have lost by 150 points. (laughs) Right. But, But, yeah. But it would have been Denver had they beat Indy last week, I'm sure, because... That's right. It was weird watching the games. You could totally tell who wanted it more and who didn't. What, what did you think about that Green Bay game? That was just embarrassing. That five minutes left, I feel like a dork for even knowing any of this. 15 points and 40 seconds. But with five minutes left when they I caught the myself, interception. I'm not going to watch it because Russell Wilson's going to do some Russell Wilson stuff, <laughs> and it's going to make me real mad. And I was like, oh, they're down more than two scores. There's two minutes. I'll turn the game on. They can't royally mess it the game up historically, right? Yeah, it's it, <laughs> statistically, it's it would be almost impossible to do what happened. It's like what happened with Tebow here, but with Tebow it happened four times in a row, which was yeah. But the Packers stopped caring. I mean, it was clear at five minutes when when the guy caught the interception. There was nobody. Out. He just looked around. He fell down. He said, "I got the ball." 
And they just thought, oh, all we got to do is hold on to the ball. And then they just got negative yards for the next three downs, or pretty close to negative yards, and then they lost the ball. They're dumb. It was a sad game. It I was heard crazy. most of the regional Super Bowl parties are canceling up shop, at least in the Denver area, not in, obviously really? in Seattle and New England, but... Oh, because because Nobody no one wants, cares. There's no a story from Denver that teams. exactly it's that a no win situation. Tickets are down twenty percent. Ticket sale or not ticket sales? Ticket value is down twenty percent this year from last year because nobody gives a shit that the Patriots are there again, sixth time in fourteen years. Nobody cares. No one cares. So unless unless you're from Massachusetts, right, or Washington, then you care that the Super Bowl's happening. Otherwise, right. Who cares? I wonder what the Vegas spread was. Um, about those two teams making it to the, because you know how you can bet on virtually oh, yeah. anything. I wonder what it couldn't have, you couldn't have won much money. No, no, that was probably pretty predictable as usual. <coughs> but so, with that many team or with that many people, if people are going to turn against that, what are they going to do? Like in hockey, when they set the, the salary cap because they were tired of the super teams and it, it did, it cut, it stopped it. I mean, the Avalanche were building this Olympic team and then. The salary right. cap went in, and we lost most of the players. Right. Everybody's an average team now. It's boring to watch, but that it's it's boring either way. I think these are going to be super teams, or everyone's going to be the same, and it's just blah. I mean, Tom Brady's going to going to retire. I mean, one day he'll be dead. Who do you think is so, going to win the Super Bowl? Uh, the Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? I, I don't know. I hope the Patriots. But Seattle's I don't ho- tough. I don't hope. I don't hope the Patriots. Though. The Patriots coach is amazing. Seattle's I tough. Hate team. Him, Could he wear some nice clothes? What is with his like cut off sweatshirt? Could he just pretend like he has a professional job? It's his superpowers. Every time he goes to Miami and he wears a T-shirt instead of his hoodie, he loses. <laughs> <laughs> Having like the last four years. I don't know. Maybe he could put some of that those. Sprinkle some of that fairy dust on something else and not look like such a douche. <laughs> I mean, he does. He looks like, I mean, seriously, he looks like they just pulled him out of the crowd somewhere and he's some guy who, you know, just doesn't give a rat's ass about anything. And I mean, I swear I've seen him pick his butt on the sidelines. Well, you know, and I mean, that's not true. There. I haven't seen that, but <laughs> I'm just saying that's, I wouldn't be surprised. That's I would weird. not be surprised. That's funny. So, Today is the 19th of December of January, right? I think so. Now that you said December, let me ponder it first. It's second. January. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because yeah. I, uh, yeah, it's January. Because we're not doing any holiday shopping. No. Not worried about two more weeks of school off for kids. And, well, no. Not, you don't have to worry about that until spring break. Um, was there school holidays today? Schools, at least in Denver, were closed today. And then, you know, <coughs> excuse me. If anyone's got a natural remedy for this cough of mine, hit me up because I'm tired of it. Um, I hear eating honey helps. Honey helps definitely um, soothe the... Honey with lemon. Honey with lemon. It helps a sore throat. I don't have a sore throat. I have a cough. But definitely soothes that, like, irritated... So is it that you need to hack stuff up? Like, do you need, like, an expectorant? I would would love to hack stuff up. Hmm. I would love to hack stuff up. You might need to acquire an expector, but that's a pharmaceutical, so blah. Blah, yeah. Um, but for, remember how I said that um, in 2015, I was going to run every single day? Yep. 19 days in. Nice. Every day. That's a lot of commitment. So 19 days, so 340 some odd left. Yep. It's not bad. Not, not bad, bad at all. Not bad at all. I think, I think yesterday was the hardest because uh, we went skiing uh, and then I ran after skiing. You don't count skiing as Mm-mm, it's your you workout. have to actually I count it as a workout. It doesn't count for my running. my running streak. Right. My running streak you have to run. Minimum of a, one consecutive mile. So they don't have to be we didn't run a ton yesterday. It doesn't have to be a huge amount, but it has to be my shoes on, out the door, running. Right. 19 days. Nice. I don't think I even ran 19 days last year. So, you're doing good. Thank you. Gavin said we should celebrate, and when he said we should celebrate when we're 20 days in, I said, "How about when we've done a month?" And he said, "Great, we'll invite everyone to for to go to frozen yogurt." So when we're a month in, we'll all go to frozen yogurt. Because what's better? What's a better way to celebrate? Dunkin' Donuts. Ugh. I don't know. Apparently, America runs on Dunkin'. 
Well, I do. I, I am a fan of the coffee. That's true. I am a fan of the coffee. So we are going to talk about um, some weed-related things. Um, one of the things we'll talk about after our first break is <laughs> we're going to talk about whatever Marley wants to talk about. What do you want to talk about, Marley? She might be here to tattle. There oh, could, probably. There could be a, a boon poo out there. Oh, boon. Um, but there was a, a funny article that we're going to talk about. Um, what was the title of the article, Jer? Uh, oh, yeah. Did you lose it? Nope. Okay. I would have lost it. It is called 10 Things We and Every Other Coloradan Dislike About Legal Weed. And I'm not sure. Did you, uh, do you agree with all of them? I to a point, it, you know, not black yeah. and white no. agree, but yet. to a point, you know, most of them. I mean, like, number one is pot snobs. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. I became a snob I myself, like, hash snob. Who, care, who cares, though? Why does that happen? Well, I care about that. Like, when sometimes you're in- <laughs> I read, like, bikes comment, comments, uh-huh. and it's just like, dude, yeah, but smoke online. the weed and chill out. Don't fucking think about it so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't care. I mean, I don't care. Like, Well, it's when you're out. Sometimes you go to places. And, oh, and, and someone will be like, oh, I won't smoke like, that. Like, I'm not because... touching that because it's not mine. Or it's not OG. Or it's not. See, I, don't, I feel like that happened way before legal weed. I felt like that happened with medical patients. Oh, I feel it like that's definitely happened. starting. I don't, think that that, I don't think that that's related to but now it's legalization. Just like 150% worse. Well, and maybe, maybe the difference, maybe what I'll agree with is the people that um, really don't know much about weed now think that because they've lived in Colorado and have been shopping recreationally for a year, that they know anything about weed. Oh, here's a comment I remember reading. Golden Go is color to col- as is to Colorado as Blue Dream as is to Cali. What? And I was like, what the fuck does it even mean, dude? I know yeah. what it means. They're both popular ass strains, but... But they're popular... I like their, their good sativas. Right. That's right. I don't know. I just... So what, read what it says about about. Um, well, it just kind of gives uh, like examples. It says who amongst us hasn't been involved in at least one of these conversations? A. The mental tenacity brought on by vaporized Maui Wowie really put me into a less of a self-realization spiral <laughs> than the piquant fumes of the blueberry Kush. Although I feel like Tristan Tarza's. Uh, Zara's interpretation of both would lead him to a place of fascist denouncement using altered household themes and nonsensical clouts of <laughs> blah 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 blah. So I, I, I get it. I, I agree with that. Again, I don't attribute that to legal weed. I attribute that to to weed jerks. Well, it's just the more readily available or the more ready availability of marijuana everywhere that we can all that it's not exclusive to just medical patients. It's not like, oh, look at the weed I got because I'm a medical patient and I've got this killer stuff. Your weed's stupid, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do one more and then we'll take our first break. What was number two? Number two is Governor Hickenlooper. I agree with that one. I thoroughly agree with I agree with that. with that one. Gabe, you agree? Uh, yeah, I kind of. Yeah, okay. So Things we dislike. We totally dislike. This says, what can we say? The guy flip-flops more than a sorority on spring break in Cabo. First, he was against Amendment 64, calling marijuana legalization reckless. But now, he's all for it. Ever since he started receiving pot lobby donations from normal, he's changed his stance from the overprotective ignorant parent to freewheeling weed enthusiast. And we're over it. Yeah, I'm, I've been over him, um, but certainly his... It, it, I mean, he really it is... It could be a lot worse, but... It, it could be a lot. It could be a lot worse, but at least he's smart enough to know that... 60 whatever percent of voters voted for Amendment 64. Thus, he has to at least be thoughtful about be, be his constituents. Enough. That's right. right. That's right. But, you know, he's a, he's a douche, too. Um, he, whatever way the wind blows, whatever way he thinks he's going to be seen in the best light, whatever way he thinks, you know, his... Uh, his constituents are going to be happiest is what he's going to say. I'm not sure that he what his what his actual opinion is, um, but again, we've said this a million times. The fact that he is such a hypocrite, um, it having started in matter what his opinion is. That's right. He's such a hypocrite. He started in the booze business, um, so to be able to have a problem with with marijuana when when his fortune was made in booze is just it's it's he's a he's a hypocrite. Absolutely. And he's and he's not a very powerful person. Like you want somebody um, who's leading your state government to to have 
to, to feel like they know what they're talking about, to have a sense of, 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 of power. Like he, like he knows what's going on and he makes good thoughtful decisions. He just kind of seems like disconnected. Yeah. Like he's not really one of us. Yeah. He's just, he's he's the guy with his headphones on at the Rockies game, listening to, listening to it on, on, yep. 850 KOA. Cause that's the better way to get the announcement of the game. And, and he's really not paying attention to anyone around him. That's, that's how I think of, of our unfortunate governor. I agree with that one. Totally. Yeah. So. so we'll come back and we'll talk more about this after the break because, um, you know, we're only on two and there's 10. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. The Law Office of Edson, Maiden, and Matz provides criminal defense, family law, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running a medical marijuana center, optional premises cultivation operation, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout the state of Colorado. We're focused on providing high-quality service and customer satisfaction. We will do everything we can to meet your expectations. WarrenEdson.com, Edson, Maiden, and Matz in Denver, 303-831-8188, and in Aspen, 970-948-7183. Warren Edson. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on Grass. Runongrass.com. And we're back. And we're back. So we were just doing um, 10 things Coloradans, 10 things we and every other Coloradan dislike about legal weed. And the first one was was weed snobs. <laughs> it's hard to think when you hear oh, whoa, whoa, them out there screaming like that because it's like, oh, I want to scream too. <laughs> <laughs> and so we kind of had some disagreements about weed snobs. But but at the end of the day, people that that act like they know more about about weed than anybody else are just annoying. <laughs> then number two was Governor Hickenlooper, which we don't really need to recap, but we could oh. just for fun. But it's Governor if you live here, hypocrite. you know why. Um, he's we're just tired of him. He we're, just sucks. We're over it. Yeah. Number three. Number three is tourists, which I totally agree with. It seems like, I mean, I I know it was. We're, we're a fairly popular state because we got lots of cool ski resorts and, and whatnot, but holy I'm, crap. I'm thrilled about the tourists. I think it's, I think it's so great that people – I mean, this, it, to me, it just shows how much people all over the country want this to happen, that they have decided to, to uh, curtail their vacations around coming to a state like Colorado where they can go into a store and legally purchase weed. Well, see, at first I thought it was pretty great too, but – like, I mean, we even have signs out on the road that say, slower traffic, keep right, left lane, passing lane only. So if you're the jackass in the left lane that's that's going slow, even if you're doing 10 over the speed limit, you're doing 65 and a 55 and nobody's in front of you, get over. It because like somebody behind you is trying to go faster. Legal pot. Yeah, that's to me, that's, that's, right, a, that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a normal thing. That's been a huge problem in Colorado since Right, but traffic is just getting steadily worse. Steadily worse. Yeah. Well, population. Let's read on here. Let's, yeah. What it says, it say? at least 18 companies offer bus tours of marijuana facilities, and the Denver Bed and Breakfast markets itself as a bud and breakfast. I'm getting it. Marijuana bed. tourism. Get it, bud and bre- get it? Do you get it? Yes. <laughs> Mar- marijuana tourism agencies have completely sold out their tours. This is not very well written. There's typos all over this. <laughs> have completely Westford? sold out the their tours. The rooster. Brimming at capacity. Yeah, this is from the rooster. Not the uh, strongest grammar skills at all. Brimming at capacity with out-of-staters who see legal weed as something more revolutionary than a lunar landing. (laughs) 
It's more clear than the clear eyes you squirt after a good toke that weed tourism is a huge deal in Colorado. In fact, tourists make up nearly half of recreational marijuana sales in the Denver... I don't, I, don't know how they, I don't know how they get that information. I don't know how they think that they know that. Right. There's, there, is no, there, is, there are no records kept. Um, it would just be anecdotal at best. So I don't know where they come up with that. Good point. Um, and 90% of recreational sales in mountain resort communities, which I believe that you we, brought up we, last week. We read that in the Denver Post, their, their year in review. And while we love that these tourists are sinking money into Colorado's economy, yes, they do. are also cluster-fucking us to bits. Traffic has become insufferable, airport lines are nauseating, and people are coming from far and wide to gawk at us and our really lovely way of life. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, there will be a marijuana theme park here, and <gasps> wait, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> <I like laughs> Let's, do that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Because that would be fun. Turn Elitches into Potland or something. Right. Turn Lakeside into Potland. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that theme park scene its day. You know, like, wouldn't <laughs> Potland at Lakeside? Canaland. At, See? Canaland. That could be like kind of like Shoots and Ladders and Candyland. Right. <laughs> well, at, at Riot Fest, remember, they had the, the Putt-Putt Golf Course. Right. And, they, and it was marijuana-themed. That's right. Yep. Oh, damn. <laughs> I can't believe we forgot about that. How did we not cover such an awesome... You know, we should have gone in with our cameras and played. And it was pretty cool. But, but it was such a chaotic event. Yeah, you know? I never even got, I mean, I kept promising Gavin that we would we would do a lot of things that we didn't end up doing. Cause no, because it's, it's a zoo. It's a zoo. Like, it, was, it was a fun was zoo. Intense. I assume that you're going to go this year if they come back. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, it was fun. It was too much fun. Okay, so so do we agree that tourism is a dislike, yes or no? I say no. I'd say it's it's. Depends where the tourists are. From. It depends on the day, because some days you don't notice anything. Some days you just fly down the highway and it's and like ski traffic. has been terrible forever. For right. ever, Everybody since, knows since we've that. had cars. Right. So right. And I don't have a problem with the uh, bet bed and breakfasts or the tours, because without those, you end up with like who's that New York Times lady who wrote that trip right. story? Right. With that. Right. Mary Dowd. Yep. Yeah. So I'm it's dead. good to have people like showing them how to get high the right way and not. Amen to that. Amen to that. I saw a video, and I think it was real. Um, there was this older guy, and he went and bought weed, came home, and he filmed it. And he's like, "I've never done this before," you know. And he goes and gets a pipe, and he's like, "I've never." That was in California, and that was on. And he has like that a was heart on, attack or something. Was it, was it well, Saturday Night Live and or something? And he smoked it backward. Well, he smoked it like a meth pipe. Like a meth pipe, yeah. yeah. That was in California, and that was oh like American God. weed like, or something. Was that, yes. was that real? Yes, yes. Yeah, like, so it was, it was just a regular pipe, and he was holding it, lighting it from the bottom, <laughs> and he's hitting it, and he's like... <sighs> oh, it was so funny. I don't so think I'm was, getting anything from this, right. but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it again. And he's burning his thumb. And so he was from he was from another state, Google and he went it. to California <laughs> to go buy whatever, because he had some medical condition. So he's in his hotel room, smoking it like he's smoking meth. Yeah, it was really... I mean... I, I hate to say it was really funny. It was really funny. But, and it, I, you feel bad when out. you watch it. You should. But, I mean, you feel bad when you see it. But, I mean, it's it's a pipe. You put the weed in there. So it's like, okay, if you can't figure out that you should light where you a, just put the weed. Right. I don't – it's hard not to find that funny. I mean, <laughs> it was but funny. it's But then you have to look at it and say, well, if he's – he must have been in some weird places before he got to here. Right. Because, right. you know, if – he the only way that he could think to light it was heating the bottom. Then, wow! Yes. Put the fire on it. <laughs> <laughs> but once he figured it out, that was great. He's yeah. Like, I'm gonna try this, and he did it. And he's like, holy! <laughs> oh my god, that was that part was great. The it, whole thing. That should have been like a thug life moment. Like right. they should have zoomed in and been like, hallelujah! <laughs> you know, like the anti thug life one or something. The Jesus life, or I don't know. Something. Okay, so number three is tourists. Yeah, there it is. It. There it is. Yeah. That's, that's it. So, so, so yeah, he's he's doing the underneath. It's so crazy. Okay, so we would show you, but every time we show you a clip from YouTube, they don't like us. No, so, sorry. Just Google it, man. What would what did you man, Google? Old man smokes weed for the first time! Exclamation point. There you go. Old man it's smokes weed for the first channel. time. Discovery. Fun. All right. Number, number four. four. National news stories about weed. It's so taboo, man. You know, like we were just talking about that, yep. I think, before the show started. Um, 
Like, ah. I'm, it's not that I'm sexy. tired of it, but it's just, they're boring now. Ugh. Remember when it was exciting when, like, The Union came out and these fun documentaries were like, yeah, this is great. And, like, in The Union, they had glasses and bandanas and it was all dark and they talk like little bugs because they were disguising their voice. And it was all weird and everything. And now people are on there like, hi, this is my address. Come into my home. You know, and this is everything. And Can I tell you what my this favorite... This is a six-point girl. <laughs> <laughs> three in veg, three in flower. <laughs> um, <coughs> my favorite weed show of all time really was... Um, I even forget what it's called, like Weed Cops or something. And it's it's about the the weed police in Humboldt County. Oh, yeah. It is so good. It's it's sort of anti-weed, but it's hilarious. And the cops are so funny, and they find all these outdoor grows. And, oh, my God, it is it is fantastic. And it's far more entertaining than than Pot Barons or whatever that – There's I, just so many I can't shows. Even watch that. I can't even watch it anymore. Cause, well, it's also so untrue. Like, you know – um, the people, the people that are actually making money are not on these shows. The people that are actually doing good business and who are reputable and understand what they're doing and who and are really trying to further the movement. Uh, we, we know s- Discovery's been corrupt so since they lie about the Shark Week shit. They uh, get these guys to like go on these boats and talk about lemon sharks, and then they change their edit the video. So, I'm so they sad. talk like about a giant shark. Nothing on so TV. So you is can't real. trust. Well, but you I can't mean, trust I, about weed, let alone right. sharks. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm I'm not, I'm just talking about the people who have been on the shows. Not even just. I mean, it's even worse. The no, no you're right. The people that the, do stuff aren't on TV. That's right. The people that are really that that I think are really the the movers and shakers um, aren't the people that that pat themselves on the back on these television shows and talk about how rich they're getting and um, I mean the people that are really making a difference the people that are really um, popular stores I mean those folks are are just minding their own business and they they don't care about about this fame stuff they're just they just want to own a good shop they're living grow it grow good weed that's right you follow go on the TV rules when you want to fake it. That's right. You know, and I hate these shows um, where people don't follow the rules. I know it sounds so dumb, but but if if you want to be in this business, you you gotta you gotta jump through some hoops. And we're gonna talk about that in another. You mean like when they bring famous people into the back where nobody but a badge person is supposed to be, and then they, they don't even they have light a light up a joint, and right? Like, I yeah, I that's can't good. believe you guys got this shit, and it's like, Whoa. right? Yeah, you can't do that. Um, how how the staff people don't have badges, how how the visitors don't have visitor badges. I mean, just stuff like that that's just, you know, just follow the rules. I mean, we are so lucky to be able to do this. And all eyes really are on us, uh, which is why we get so frustrated with these national news reports, because everyone's looking at us. And if I see the same guy in a tie-dye shirt with a big old blunt, as if that's the only person that is buying, and there's nothing wrong with that, but but to me... Um, they want to sensationalize it. And so what do you do? You take the biggest stereotype you can find and you push that out to the public. And that's what's on most of these TV shows. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I mean, let's say Monday, somebody posted on my, on my Facebook page the other day said, I saw you on 2020. I was like, oh shit. I mean, I got scared for a sec. (laughs) Cause you know, you don't know. Right. Right. And I was like, well, what, what for? And they said, oh, it's marijuana related. And it's like, ah, imagine that. (laughs) Right. You know, do you know what it was though? Do you know what you were doing? I still don't know. Well, we'll have to find out. But I'm sure it was, it was probably in the background, you know, it was probably at like a, an event, uh, uh, Capital or something. Hood Lab, Capital. It was a video you'd taken big fat dab. It could have been. Highly doubt it, but (laughs) could have been. You never know. I mean, I hope not, but you never know. Let's take another quick break, and we can come back with uh, and finish the rest of the things that Colorado. Oh wait, so were we all in agreement with number? Oh, four? sorry. That, that yes. I would say yes. I agree. Like I'm tired of the. What do you think, Gabe? Oh, it's national news stories about. Oh weed. yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're done with that. Yes. Cool. All right, we'll be back, and we'll come back with number five. Excellent. Mm-hmm. 
Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack Suite 110 on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. The Law Office of Edson Maiden and Matz provides criminal defense, family law, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running a medical marijuana center, optional premises cultivation operation, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout the state of Colorado. We're focused on providing high-quality service and customer satisfaction. We will do everything we can to meet your expectations. WarrenEdson.com, Edson Maiden and Matz in Denver, 303-831-8188, and in Aspen, 970-948-7183. Warren Edson. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. And we're back. God. <laughs> Gary, you're the best. i got to tell you that right uh, now. Well, hey, if it's any consolation, and I know it's not, so I'm just going to throw that out there now. <laughs> um, next year is an election year, so we could have plenty of opportunities this year to get new... New bumpers. Uh, new bumpers from new politicians giving us more bullshit. <laughs> Okay, so back to the Rooster article, the 10 things that Coloradans hate about legal weed. So, if so, you, so we're, we're, sort of, we're sort of iffy on whether we agree. On some you. of these, yeah, because some of them, they're just, it's kind of a toss-up, but it's just kind of a fun article. Overall, but, I hate nothing about legal weed. I just want to say that I love, I love legal weed. I love it. More or less, I think I just absolutely love it, too. I mean, <laughs> how, how, could, how can you not? I mean, more I, or less. I'm not a big fan of taxes and... And, and all the, the super regulations right now. But I am a fan of it because that's how these things Legal work. Week, that's right. When you first open up a brand new business, a brand new amusement park, you got to let people in, figure out what all the problems are. You got to work it all through. It's just going to be totally chaos for a little while. You give people right. ultra freedom. It's going to be right. chaos. Yep. But there were no riots. Just got to throw that back out no, there. No, no one's died. So as a recap, number one was weed snobs, which we kind of agree on, so kind of don't. So let's do this. Yeah. So we said... Um, we said eh on this one, so we were middle of the road. Yeah, because it's you're right. It really hasn't. It's it's gotten more. We don't like weed snobs, but we don't think it has to do with legal weed. Not 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 particularly. Yeah. There's a rise of it, but it's not due to legal weed now. Um, number two is Governor Hickenlooper. We absolutely agreed on that one. And if you live here, you know why. If you don't, if you've been listening to us, you know why. Yeah. Number three was tourists, and that one we were kind of in the middle on that one. Too. I disagreed with that one. Um. Because sometimes come, some come stuff, us. It, it does get to be a little bit more crazy, especially when it's all snowy out and I've, you know, driving down the road and haven't seen a single Colorado license plate. That gets a little weird. But that may not be because of legal weed. That could just be because it's ski season. It's ski season, right. And wait till spring break hits. Do you guys know that everyone comes here for spring break? You think people go to Florida, they come to Colorado. Skiing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One, one road I don't take. Many times of the year, and it's very scheduled. You know, Labor Day, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Spring Break. I don't take I seventy west past, uh, well, the Morrison exit. Yeah, because anywhere, well, I mean, maybe up to Lookout, but anywhere past that, you're just asking for boredom and <coughs> being in a parking lot, a sixty five mile an hour parking lot. Right. Um, I I it took us two hours and forty five minutes on the tenth to get up to Loveland to get up to the tunnel. Two hours and 45 minutes. Takes an hour normally. That's... <laughs> it was a long time. But at least you made it safe. We were safe. We were safe. you know, I'm not going to lie, the mountains aren't exactly the safest place when it's icy. Yeah, it's 10 miles per... People going 10 miles per hour is ridiculous. Right. Okay, what's the next one? Number four was where I think that we left off. We all agreed. National news stories about weed. We're done. All these new TV shows. But... It's to be expected, you know, with the pot boom, everything's exploding. I mean, T-shirts, glass, uh, 
I mean, obviously weed, weed stores, <laughs> you know. Um, it's super sexy right now. It is It is super sexy. Like if you can think of it and it can be weed related, you probably can make money doing it right now. Yeah. I mean, if you crochet, you could crochet marijuana related things, you know, like rig koozies, little floor mats, a sweater. I mean, hell, anything at this point that, that you've got skill, as long as you can market it, you can make money right now. I mean, can I tell you that I bought um, uh, Rasta colored, so you know what a lanyard is? Everyone knows that a lanyard. So a lanyard with, with pot leaves on it in Rasta colors. They sold out in a day. <laughs> they sold out in a day. Who knew? Who knew that that would be the thing? You know what was really weird? Last year when I went Halloween shopping, I, I like to go to like thrift stores because you always find really cool stuff there. Um, last year I was really horrified because when I went in, there was a whole aisle to fake stoner stereotypical stoner stuff i mean it was usually there's like one thing there's yeah. the the wacky wig and the the big fake blunt or something this yeah. was i mean there was a whole whole side of different things it's like where was this at at the thrift store oh. at arc <coughs> you know and it's like wow if this is at the thrift store i'd hate right. to go into the the regular you know ugh. costume shop i know i know and so the the fortunately the stereotypical stoner <coughs> archetype is breaking down you know, we're oh. not, it's not just Chong anymore, which really is kind of the, sort of the Afro-y, little, little round colored glasses, open vest, you Hippie. know, like, <laughs> you know, and it's but not that anymore. Wrong with that. There's no, nothing there's wrong not. with that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it, again, I mean, we try so hard to get rid of that stereotype that lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different types of people smoke or partake. Which is real nice. Which but, is real nice. But that's what I, I mean, I brought up all that, that like explosion in uh, products and stuff because television is a product as well. And so while everybody's cashing in on their own little piece of it, TV, people on TV are doing it too. Oh, I mean, there are shows all over the place from Pot Barons to American Weed to Drugs Inc. You know, and then there's segments on 60 Minutes. But that's because they know when they go look at their their websites um, People and they know. look at their standings, they see marijuana related stories have higher hits. Yeah. So now they're all starting to get in on it, which was really cool for a little bit. Just sucks now. Well, yeah, and we're totally over. It. And when it's funny because it used to be when someone said, "Oh yeah, I'm being interviewed by whatever," or "I'm being followed around by camera crews from whatever," everyone's like, "Oh, that's really cool." Now we're like, "Uh, eh, okay." Or damn, why? <laughs> like, don't know. It's it's really weird how that all changed. Well, and people have found that they they are disappointed in the outcome of uh, of the article or of the the segment because especially the Fox ones. It's it's really easy. It's really easy to have your words twisted. Editing is really easy, and and you can make lemon sharks sound like great whites. Well, you take, you take ten, they take 10 sentences, edit it all down to two sentences, and it's nothing that you said. Right. You know, and they Certainly just, isn't what you meant. Right. You know, or they cut you off. You said really amazing stuff, but they cut you off after three words because those three words made a whole well, sweet new story. Was, yep, that was all they wanted. So, I don't know. But right, no, what, number five. number five? Is people moving here without jobs. So, which... You know, you see a lot if you're on Facebook. You know, everybody's trying to move here with their kids and having GoFundMe accounts. You know, help help us move there so we can get our kid taken <coughs> care of. And it was, I don't know, that was really nice for a while. It's just, it's hard. I think there's two th two different things. There are people who are coming here because they want they want medicine for their for themselves or their family members. And then there are people who are coming here because they think that they haven't been able to find work wherever they live, and they think that that they can get work easily here because because it is a booming industry. But there are lots of people here already who who wanted jobs. Well, and even that you hit it right on the head. Even the the little blurb here says everyone is moving to Colorado. Everyone, which obviously isn't true, thankfully. Because you're listening from somewhere else. Exactly. <laughs> And they're all looking for marijuana industry jobs, but none of them have jobs yet, which means the weed job market is flooded. That's a good thing for the economy and the growth of the weed sector, but that also means it's fucking impossible to get a job trimming buds these days, which 
you know, it's, it's, true. it's probably partially true. I see it all, online all the time. People, I need trimmers, I need trimmers. But then there's always like 50 or 100 people commenting, I'll do it, I'll do it. So and you need trimmers for this amount of time. And yeah. right. And people hit me up all the time. Can you help me get a job there? And can you help me? Can you help me? It's like Facebook. I mean, what do you use it for? I mean, stop posting pictures of kitties and start reading people's posts because. Don't ever stop posting pictures of kitties. <laughs> Don't ever stop. And videos are even better. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cat fail videos where like the cats that can't jump. Like, yeah. Like, mm. I have one of those. But if if you want to come here to get a job, fantastic. Do your homework first. Please. Um, there's lots of things that you need to do before you can even step foot um, on your first day. So know what those things are. Know what pre- precludes you from working in this industry. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's what, that's what. Right. We'll tell you right now. I mean, go to the MED website. Most of the information that you need is there. Look for the facts. Um, I think they answer most of the basic questions. They do. Absolutely. You know, what you can't apply with, you know, what kind of felonies, what, what it, you know, what, if you owe the IRS money, what you got to do to remedy that. And it's really pretty simple. And you have to, this is the easy part, but you have to be a resident of Colorado. Um, and all they want is... Um, a lease or a bill in your name or those kinds of things. You don't have to have been here for a certain amount of time. You can, you know, on your first day here, when you have a lease, that you can use that. Right. Or, you know, get water turned on in your name, get yep. a cell phone bill in your name that goes to a Colorado address. Yep. You know, and then use that address. Yep. It's not hard. So, so what do we think about this one? Well, you're more in the industry. Now, I mean, do you do you have a large influx of people always looking for work? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we do. If we if if we post an ad, which we don't do very often, looking for help, we get hundreds of responses. But that's exciting, though, because yeah. that's hundreds of people that are looking to you to help them get to their dreams. You know, to be able to sit in a room with you know fifty, a hundred plants that are budding and that are it's fun. It's, it is. It's fun stuff. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in the middle on that one. I'm in the middle on that it's... one, too. I want people to come here. I certainly want people to come here to get their kids' medicine. Right. For sure. Um, I just find Colorado's geography, I don't know, silly. Because we're very concentrated. Oh. Colorado's a very large state. So the fact that we're all concentrated into these little areas as Colorado Springs, Denver, Fort Collins, Boulder, you know, and little surrounding areas around there, there's so much Colorado that's open. Right. So I please so live in a if, yurt somewhere. If you're gonna move here, bring lots of money and start new towns. <laughs> like just steamboat. there's tons yeah. of land yeah. that's out there. I mean, start a new town. Start a new town. Start a new city. You know, like give us new stuff to to do. Start, <laughs> <laughs> make us want you. Make that's us want you. Saying. Yes. Make thank us you. want you. So speaking of number six, what was number six? Pushing up home prices. Now I'm just 100 percent yes. I don't think that has anything to do with legal weed. I think that's crap. It seems like it's gone up s- sharply since legal weed. Okay. Not only have I mean a lot of it's medical um, because I think that like warehouses. I mean, tell me, is there a, is there that. an open warehouse anywhere? No. But we covered that last week. If you were listening, um, there's but, not an open warehouse anywhere. And then, like when me and Jenny were looking for places to live. Um, you could see, you know, the first couple of years, the, it was it was just steadily climbing. It was 700 maybe for a two-bedroom. <laughs> a year later, it, it's 900, 1,000. Now it's 1,000, 1,200. I mean, it's steadily going up. But That's right. So that one I, I'd have to say I agree with because looking for places to constantly live every right. year, it's just getting harder and harder and harder. I mean, I want a one bedroom. Why do I, why is it a thousand dollars for a one bedroom in Colorado now? Well, and the, and certainly the rental market has shrunk. Um, so I think, I think maybe legal weed played a part in that. Um, because, because Colorado is such an attractive place to be in part because we have legal weed. So we have great outdoor activities. We have wonderful weather. I mean, um, I did not wear a jacket today. It's January 19th. Three or four I, days in a row now. I ran in shorts today. Um, and some people break up the price because you smoke in the apartment or whatever. Too. That's right. That's right. But a lot of people are renting second, third, fourth, fifth homes so they can have grow homes. Um, I mean, I never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Zip. <coughs> Anyways, but so so I'll I'll say 
Well, so here, here, here's something like yes. there's and who knows these may or may not have actual facts based behind it, but it says speaking of everyone moving here, have you noticed how it's made your rent go up like a thousand dollars? Denver's housing market is actually the second fastest growing in the country behind San Francisco. In 2013, rent went up an uncomfortable nine percent. People want to live here so badly. They're willing to live in a house with baboons as roommates, and it's got a it's got a link for that story. Rent a place that's currently on fire. Now I want to go and look at that because that has got to be a great story. And live in a more and live in mortician's closets. So and it's got links to all these examples. So let's go. To, let's go to the one about currently on, on fire. fire. Yeah, like I have to know what's yeah, going the on here. The go the baboon. Okay. So I mean. If you don't live here, I mean, is that, I mean, what would you, what would you do to move here? I guess. I mean, I love it here. I can't imagine living anywhere else. Well, see, I want to move to like Cali or somewhere tropical for six months a year just to to do it. Just to do it. But Colorado, it's certainly my home. I I have some friends that are moving. Um, one of my college roommates is moving back to Florida, and while I love Florida, I just want to live here. Okay, so what's the story about the baboon? Well, it says. Again, Denver has the the fastest growing rental market in the country. Thousands of people are moving here, but with a 96% rental home occupancy rate, yep. rental prices are skyrocketing as desirable places to live disappear at unprecedented rates. And that made us wonder, how far will people go to live in Denver? How much will they pay to live inside city limits? What kind of weird, shitty living situations would they endure? Well, for starters... They'd live with baboons. We tested our question by pay- placing a fake ad on the Denver Craigslist to see how far people <coughs> were willing to go to live here. It advertised a, quote, unique opportunity to live with baboons, end quote. But before we get in- into the kind of responses we got to that. This is another that, Rooster article, by the way. Right. So, you know, who knows? Um, here are some of the facts compiled by Axiometrics about Denver's rental market to get you in the mood. Rents in Denver area grew 9% on average from July of 2013 to July of 2014, which has the second fastest rate in the country behind San Francisco. The national or the nationwide rental market growth rate was 4%. Rental rates have, you know, this is, this is boring. I want to see more about the baboon. Damn it. That's okay. So, so let's take a quick break and come back and finish out the rest of the article. Um, because we're only on number. Oh hell, I don't know. I don't know. We're number something. So we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack Suite 110 on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. The law offices of Vets and Maintenance Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Are you a runner are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization run on grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws we speak the truth about cannabis bringing the message through our feet to new ears check out runongrass.com to find out more about us our events and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner if you're in the denver area please join us for runs or start a group in your area running not your thing any sport can do it on grass runongrass.com back oh we've just been reading fun stuff off here this is great so we skipped ahead to read the text of the house that was on fire um because we just had to know so they listed a the rooster listed a fake ad on craigslist on denver's craigslist to see how many people were willing to live there and it was advertised as quote currently burning home for rent now the ad says this 
A property of mine is on fire due to a neighboring meth lab, and I'm guessing it has some pretty bad fire damage. It was worth a lot before the fire, but in its current condition, I'm putting it up for an extremely discounted rate. Fire trucks coming now, I can hear them. Pros. Great neighborhood in uptown. Close to lots of bars and restaurants. Two. Walkability score, 92. Three. Tons of free street parking. Four. Dishwasher. Five. Heat. (laughs) Six. Big and spacious. Seven. Each bedroom has its own bathroom. Eight. Pets welcome. Nine. Well, that's blank. (laughs) Cons. Gonna have to patch the place up pretty quick after the fire. So it's no Marriott inside. And two. No laundry. Used to rent this place for twenty five hundred. Hard to find place like this in in uptown. Flexible lease available now. And they have pictures of a house that was on fire. There's firefighters putting it out. Um, the inside is trashed. burned and trashed. Um, and people responded. <laughs> I mean, here's one response that says, "I'm curious about the burned unit." Have you had place inspected by firefighters or home inspectors or engineers or someone who can vouch that the place is totally structurally safe? I mean, there's, there's, and this goes on and on. People are seriously interested. So it's, it's crazy. So the the moral of it is, is that people are desperate to live in in Colorado. They don't care what they're moving into. That's right. So. Okay. So I'll agree with that one. Yeah. That one's just not really too debatable. Number seven. And I know we're going to agree on this one is weed conventions. Which, like, I, I love going to weed things, but I am so burnt out on all these conventions. I mean, oh, my gosh. Burnt out. I mean, the Cannabis Cup is coming. If I can acquire a ticket for free, I might go. But I don't want to stand in line to hang out like this with people that Oh, I, I just get just, so freaked. Yeah. Right. So. There's nothing new. There's nothing new. No. I mean, if that. you haven't been to a weed convention and you don't live in Colorado, come on out. Go to them. They're Enjoy. great. They're tons of fun. But once you've been to one, you've been to them You're all. done, yeah. You know, and We're especially done. if you've been to 100, you've been to too Ugh, many. Right. So That's easy. That one was an easy one. Oh, my God. They just get easier. Number eight is weed girls. What's a weed girl? I don't know like what a weed girl is. 420 nurses, the, all the different girls that you see out selling weed or not selling weed, but the, or the, you body know, the scantily glad, clad, you know, they're at the events, they're always the ones that are like, hey, baby, you see my titties? Come to our dispensary. Come on. These girls. I think that started before legal weed, but whatever. I don't care necessarily about that so much. I know that I'm sure you guys I, hate that. I'm like, whatever. I, I love half-naked girls, but this is just getting to be stupid. Like, I even like some of the 420 nurses. I think that they're actually decent people, but very few of them are nurses. Sex sells. Right. Booty sells. Like, call yourselves 420 Titties models. sell. Like, whatever, but I don't know. I think the name is just kind of silly. I mean, I don't disagree with that at all, but I, what, I mean... Right. We're over it. Yeah. Really? What's the next one? Number nine is Red Man and Method Man. <laughs> now, this is great. Now, hold on. I see the look on your face. This is great, though. What's that you say? Red Man and Method Man are coming to Red Rocks for the 41st time this year? <laughs> Sound the alarms and call Snickle the press. Like we get it. They were in how high. They smoke weed. Nothing against the rappers. We love them as much as the next guy. But we've been going to Red Rocks and every other concert venue, for that matter, to smoke weed in public at a show since the day we learned what weed was. Going to a Method Man or Red Man show where everyone is smoking and they're smoking and the Red Rocks themselves are smoking, (laughs) it just doesn't delight like it used to. Agreed. And I totally agree. Like the big weed concerts would be sweet if it was out in Nebraska or, or somewhere where it's not legal, but here... Who cares? Really, like, I disagree with that one. I like when we have a chill 420 show on Red Rocks. Depends who it is. Well, but I haven't seen. Are you Method talking Man just on 420? Red Man there. Well, or, or 420 like weed friendly. Well, it dep- If it's a nice summer day and it's the right situation, yeah. The thing. Did you hear about the? Sorry, not to change point, but they changed the dubstep thing for Red Rocks. Well, what it's just they changed that? all the sounds. Like they they lowered the the legal decibel level. Do you hear about that? Mm-hmm. Like Red Rocks is lowering the decibel level, so. Do you not like that, or do you? Like I that? disagree with it. I, I disagree on lowering the there, decibels, but I do agree. Take all the EDM and take it to like some of the indoor venues. Well, and that's stuff. just we discriminatory. It's already at the indoor venues. You know? <laughs> I mean, really? yeah, that's that's discriminatory. When we have the best segregation of music. When we have the best 
outdoor venue in the world, why play? Why not have some of the best people in the world come there, not some dude hit play on this DJ? Because if you've never been on acid and seen pretty <laughs> lights and laser beams at Red I Rocks... I have, multiple times. But so after the 15th is, time he comes there... Well, but it's I the same as anybody else that it. goes there. You know, if, I'm if just the saying, Eagles show if up there 15, 100 times, if there's, who cares? If there's 25 shows, 20 of them are electric music. Doesn't well, because those like are that. real popular right now. You're so popular. People are paying way too much to see way too little. I agree with that. Exactly. All right, what's number 10? Number 10 is, this one is great. Driving to another state. Right. Like, I... Don't pull us over because we have Colorado plates. But that seems to be a really big thing right now. Yes. I like how there's only one sentence here to describe this. What's it say? If you've ever been frisked by a gaggle of cops and their little dogs, too, <laughs> for having Colorado plates, you know what we mean. Right. Agreed. Agreed. So, I mean, I, but, but, but way before legal weed, I was pulled over, you know, leaving the state just for Colorado plates because we have medical, which is still right, legal. Right, but right. So, but I'm sure it's blown up tons. I mean, look, we're getting sued by two neighboring states because they're sad that people are bringing our weed to their state or yeah, through their state. Yeah, so don't do that either. Yeah, don't, don't do don't that. Don't do that. Don't do don't that. Don't mail it. Don't just stop. Stop. Stop whatever dumb thing you're doing and stop making it harder on all of us. We'd really like this to succeed. I'd like to be able to go to Nebraska. I mean, I don't want to go to Nebraska, but <laughs> if I were to go to Nebraska and and not be stereotyped because of my plates but right now that's way it is colorado is is known all over the world now for pot all over the world colorado (laughs) potheads well that was a pretty interesting article i liked that i thought it was funny it was certainly fun i mean we're not sure how entirely factual but that's why we we voted on it that's why we voted like so you know but for the most part we agreed so let's let's try for the last couple moments does anybody have something that should have been on this list like what are you most tired of um from um, legal weed like what what has that brought about that you're like all right i'm i'm done i thought the weed critics was a good one um my favorite was the was the national news thing because i'm so over that the national news that the, fake site no 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 the oh. this one the the um oh that's national report yeah the how how the new all the news stories and i'm just I'm just so tired about of every time you turn around. I mean, even the local news, they do 30, like 13 seconds little snippets of news about I guess anything marijuana related. This. It's just, I guess we're sick of the tabooness of all of it. Well, because it's not taboo here and, and it is other places. And so that's why it's interesting and sexy. Right. To other people. I mean, I guess if I lived in Arkansas. This would be really cool. But right. This isn't a poll about what Arkansans don't like about That's legal right. weed. Um, it's about what we don't like. Right. But overall, like we said before, I kind of like everything about legal right. weed. I think it's fantastic. I think it's good. I, I like mean, it. Yeah. I don't. I don't like the profiling. I don't like know, the profiling. The, the out-of-state profiling so much. Uh, I think I, I'm hoping that the regulations will kind of chill out and settle settle down when. Well, national. Things are changing nationally. I mean, did you see the story about Eric Holder recently um, mm-hmm. from Friday, how they're shutting down the seizure program or whatever? Oh, yeah, so now the states can no longer just take your shit. It's like it took till now for them to go, oh, this is wrong? Right, exactly. I, mean, I guess they just had to <laughs> take $3.5 billion before they're like, oh, fuck. Maybe we shouldn't do Maybe this. Maybe we shouldn't be doing right. this from people. Right, <laughs> so. Exactly. Well, January has been ju- jubilant. Jubilant. That's a hard word to say. Jubilant. I'm glad you started it because I had to think about it too. Like, I appreciate it. It took the two of us to say it. Um, and we will be back next week. That will be Monday, January 26th. So exciting. So that will be our last jubilant January. Wow, January went by fast. I mean, February. I mean, fun. Fun February, fabulous. fabulous is the one I was farting. Thinking. Farting February, we could have that for a specific mm. day. I don't know. That Maybe we well, do that. Let's, 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 let's. I almost put a fart noise at the end of the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> so Valentine's Day is on Saturday. Saturday the 14th. So I was I was hoping if that would have been, we could have that be farting. Farting February is Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we want to thank you so much and thank all of our sponsors and check us out next week. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night.